Hi. Movie Show Recaps here. Today I'm going to explain an action film called Avatar. Sit back and relax as you are about to watch Movie Show Recaps. In 2154, the RDA, or Resources Development Administration, recruits Jake Sully, a man in a wheelchair. Jake's twin brother Tom, who worked for the RDA, was killed, and now they need Jake to replace his brother in the Avatar program. The Avatar program is located on a planet called Pandora. Jake is the only one that can activate Tom's avatar because they are twins. Jake agrees and is put in a sleep chamber where he sleeps for almost six years as the spaceship travels to the planet. When Jake lands on the planet, he meets the head of the avatar program, Dr. Grace Augustine, and Dr. Norm Spellman, who was also friends with his twin brother. He learns that Pandora's atmosphere is dangerous to humans and its land is ruined by a species called the Navi 10-foot-tall blue-skinned human-looking creatures. The Navi worship the Mother Nature goddess called Iowa, and in order to explore the land, temporarily humans transfer their consciousness to avatars. A human Navi that the RDA has created and can only be activated by its own biological owner. Jake and Norm go into the cambers and enter their avatar bodies for the first time. Jake feels excited to be able to walk and run again for the first time in years. He then meets Trudy, a combat pilot assigned to the Avatar team who introduces him to the Colonel Miles Quaritch. Quaritch comes up with a deal for Jake. He will join the Avatar team on their expeditions, but he will report everything he finds out about the Navi and their home tree, which is sitting on unobtainium and the largest amount on Pandora. The RDA is mining this mineral to take back and sell on Earth. The Colonel will make sure that the company replaces Jake's legs. So Jake agrees. He joins Grace and Norm on their research expedition. While the scientists search for samples, a beast called the Thanator attacks Jake, removing him from the group. He barely escapes with his life and is soon left in a jungle alone to survive, until a female Navi named Natyri saves him. Natyri feels a strong attraction to Jake but thinks he is too stupid and naive. Seeds from the spirit tree lands on them and takes this as a sign to take him to her clan, the Omatakea. He is met with a warm welcome, especially from Tsute, the heir to the chief position and Natyri's fiancé. Jake meets the clan's chief and priestess Itukin and Imoat, who also is Natyri's parents. After much deliberation, Imoat decides to take in Jake and have Natyri teach him their ways of life. Jake gets comfortable for the night with the clan and he is instantly brought back to the Avatar Stimulator. He reports everything he's learned to Grace as well as to Colonel Quaritch. The Colonel gives Jake three months to convince the Navi to move to another place or else they will be bombing their home tree. Grace is suspicious of Jake's dealings with the Colonel, so she transfers the team to a remote outpost at the floating mountains of Pandora. Over the next three months, Natyri teaches Jake the ways of the Navi. Once he is ready, he will have to choose his own Ikrin, a winged beast the Navis used to hunt, and he will finally become a Navi warrior. Jake learns to track and hunt the wildlife and also begins to understand the spiritual between all the things in Pandora. Soon enough, Jake grows sympathetic with the Nasix and starts falling in love with Natyri. Once he gets his first clean kill, Natyri, Tsute, and other Nasix go to the floating mountains to get their own Ikrin. They reach the Ikrin's nest and Tsute orders Jake to choose first. In order to choose one, the Ikrin must choose him first by trying to kill him. He manages to take down one of the Ikrin and bonds with it through the nerve endings on his hair. Natyri pushes them off the cliff forcing Jake to fly with his Ikrin to bond even more. As they're flying their Ikrin, Jake and Natyri face an encounter with the Torek, a mighty dragon-like beast that the Nasix fear and worship. Only five Nasix in history have been able to tame and ride the Torek, including Natyri's great-grandfather. Three months goes by and the crew goes back to the facility. Quaritch gives Jake the ultimatum, but he asks the colonel for an extension just until this final ceremony is over, so he can convince them to relocate. The day of the ceremony, Jake is finally accepted into the Omatakea clan. Now that he is one of them, Natyri takes Jake into the Tree of Souls. The Tree of Souls is one of the Nasik's most sacred places where the memories of their ancestors are kept. They can get into these memories by tying their nerve endings to the fibers of the tree. It is also one of the places with the most unobtainium minerals. Natyri tells Jake that he can now choose a wife and then proposes to Natyri, who happily accepts. Under the Tree of Souls, the two kiss and connect their nerve endings, binding themselves to each other for the rest of their lives. Natyri is awakened by the sounds of a large machine a bulldozer has come from the RDA tearing up the Tree of Souls. Natyri tries to wake Jake, but he is currently out of the stimulation and remains unconscious. Jake wakes up as Natyri is dragging him away. Jake signals the bulldozer to stop, but it continues on plowing. He climbs the machine and starts destroying the cameras, but the crew starts shooting at him. They run away with Natyri sobbing and watch the machines tear down their sacred place. 
Meanwhile, the RDA can see Jake destroying the cameras and is able to identify him. Jake and Natari make it back to the home tree where he tries to persuade everyone to relocate for the safety of the clan. Tsute attacks Jake, accusing him of being with his betrothed. Natari says it's true and it cannot be undone as they are now bonded before Iowa. Norm tries to stop the soldiers as they take Jake and Grace from the simulators, but it's too late. Jake takes the opportunity to state his final plea, but he and Grace fall asleep before he can say anything. They are brought back to the facility and Jake's true allegiance is revealed through a video log stating that the Nasix will never give up their home. Quaritch decides to bomb the Nasix away from the home tree. Grace then tells the company that they can't destroy the home tree because it will destroy the neural network to Pandora. The synapses connect all of them together like one big brain. The RDA doesn't really believe it, but agrees to give the team one hour to convince the Omatikea to move. Grace and Jake regain consciousness and Jake starts telling them about the RDA's plans. He then admits that he was sent there as a spy, but now things have changed. Hurt and betrayed, Natari lashes out at him and leaves. Jake and Grace are then taken captive. The RDA sends helicopters to the home tree and starts gassing them out. The Omatikea fights back, but their arrows are useless against the steel of the crafts. Then they fire the missiles at the natives and at the home tree. The tree catches on fire as the Nasix make a run for their lives. Jack and Grace are tied and unable to escape. They are set free and are being told that if they are indeed one of them then they should help them. The firing continues causing the trunk to finally break. The home tree falls over and kills a hundred Nasix by crushing them on the ground. Natari searches for survivors and finds her father. With his dying breath, he bestows upon her his bow and arrows and makes her promise to fulfill her duties. Jakes finds her in, but Natari pushes him away, telling him to never come back. Back at the facility, Jake and Grace are taken out of the simulation and are arrested, while Jake's avatar body collapses among the debris. As the avatar team is in their cell, Trudy gets them out. They hijack one of the helicopters and escape, but Grace takes a hit to the stomach. Jake patches her up as they make it back to their outpost. They relocate higher up the mountains where the RDA can't get to it easily. Jake goes back into the simulator and once he's back in his avatar form, he calls his Ikrin. Jake knows that there's only one way the Omatikea will listen to him. They hunt down the Torek. The Omatikea are forced to take refuge at the last remaining tree of souls. They are praying and patching up wounds and hear a strong wind behind them and gasp in horror as they see the Torek flying towards them. It lands on the ground and Natari is amazed to see that Jake has managed to tame the beast. Now the Navi will listen to Jake. Jake asks Sute to join him in the fight against the humans and he agrees. Jake then brings Grace to the Nasix asking them to save her life. He takes her body to the Tree of Souls together with her avatar body and the clan performs a ritual to try and transfer Grace's consciousness into her avatar form. But it was too late. Grace's wound was too big and she died before the ritual was over. Jake knows that the battle is far from over. Together with Tsute, they round up the Omatikea and then travel to neighboring clans gathering Nasix from the plains, seas, and mountains to join them in the battle for their homes. They end up with over 2,000 Nasix at the Tree of Souls. Jake learns the RDA's plans to bomb the Tree of Souls, so he then planned to lure them through the floating mountains and then attack them, so they don't reach the sacred place. Jake prays to the Tree of Souls for guidance. When morning comes, the RDA launches the hovercrafts with the bombs. The clans wait for them among the floating mountains. The Nasix take the first fire flying around the hovercrafts and shooting them down with their arrows. They manage to take down some helicopters, but the armory was too strong. They launch fires at the Nasix with their guns taking down a big number of them. Colonel Quaritch spots Jake on the Torek and starts firing at him. Jake escapes the shots and lures the colonel's hovercraft deeper into the mountains. Suddenly, Trudy and her helicopter intervenes and she shoots fire at the colonel allowing Jake to escape. Natari Zikrin is taken down and she lands on the ground witnessing what the humans have caused. Sute launches at the main hovercraft, taking down a number of men unloading the bombs before he is gunned down and falls to the ground. The Nasix retreat deeper into the forest. Suddenly the hovercrafts pick up a different movement. And in seconds, matter of seconds, Pandorian wildlife come charging at the machines. The Ikrin overtakes the skies taking down the remaining crafts. Natari feels like this as a sign of help from Iowa. Jake then lands on the main hovercraft carrying the bombs and takes down the guns. He runs around the craft avoiding fire and launches a grenade at one of the engines. The craft crashes down and blows up among the mountains. He launches several more grenades at the colonel's craft, but Quaritch manages to escape using a mechanical suit. The grenades blow up close to Jake and is tossed back and lands back on the ground. The colonel survives the blow and starts hunting down the outpost. 
Quaritch reaches the location of the simulators just in time as Natiri attacks him. Quaritch takes her down and traps her beneath a tree. As he's about to stab her, Jake appears and starts fighting him. Jake is able to hold him off breaking his knife and the protective glass around the suit. So the colonel can't breath and gasps for air. In a last attempt, he targets Jake's real body instead. He breaks open the glass of the outpost and destroys the simulators. Jake stabs him in the neck as the colonel drags his body. Natiri gets free from underneath the tree and launches an arrow straight to the colonel's heart. Then another arrow to finish him off. Meanwhile, Jake emerges from the simulator dragging his body to reach for the air mask. The poisonous air makes him unconscious and he's unable to breathe. Natiri realizes what's happening and she climbs inside the outpost and puts the air mask on Jake. She now sees his real body for the first time and they hold each other close. Back in his avatar form, Jake and Natiri find Tsute who pleads to Jake to kill him so that he would die a true warrior death. As he takes his last breaths, Tsute acknowledges Jake as his brother and passes the chieftainship to him. Jake accepts this with honor. The war is over and the Nasics have won. The facility is destroyed and the humans are sent back on their spaceships and back to Earth. Jake, Norm and some other humans are given permission by the Nasics to stay. Jake is now crowned as the chief of the Omatakea clan. On his new birthday, he is taken to the Tree of Souls with Natiri where they perform a ritual, transferring his consciousness to his new avatar body. And then he wakes up. Thanks for watching. What was your favorite part of the movie? Let us know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more movie show recaps like this.